Mel gave me a challenge and she gave me these images so that I could do a quick salon viable design and I did it. So the first nail is just a white gel polish on the base. We've cured that twice and I'm going to just use this glitter to make it look like crispy snow. We're just going to put Joker on which is a non-inhibition top coat and then literally just drizzle the glitter. You could also use acrylic powder for this as well over the top of the whole nail and cure it. It will actually stay in place. Whilst that's curing, let's top coat the other nails. We're going to gloss top coat only the red ones. And then we're going to matte top coat the white one because we're going to do some art on that one. Now you can use a top coat with no inhibition layer, but I'm just using a top coat that I love. Once they're out of the lamp, we're going to cleanse off that inhibition layer so they're ready for some artwork. Now, we're going to use spider gel for this. You could use a gel paint if you wish, but it, spider gel will actually sit on top of the top coat and not actually move. So it's a great alternative. We don't want to apply another top coat on this. This is a quick design that we're doing for the salon. So all I'm doing is I'm drizzling up and down. Do you remember the other one of the examples that Mal gave me? Well, I'm using that to create this effect. So I'm literally just drizzling up and down over the top of the whole nail and I'm creating these fine lines. And what we will do when this is cured is we will add tiny little pearls on there. I did think about doing some snowflakes, but I couldn't have got that in in 10 minutes. So I'm also using the spider gel to create the string for the ball balls. I'm going to do some ball balls hanging down. And the reason why I'm doing this and I'm not doing it with paint is because I've already top coated. I don't particularly want to have to top coat again. Um, and if I was to do this with a gel paint, for example, um, I don't think I'd get those lines as straight. I mean, this spider gel is pretty awesome. And I've got the pot out anyway. So once these two pieces of string are down, we're going to cure that. We can come back and add the baubles. Now I'm using gel paint. I'm actually using the Grand Gel from Mystic Nails, which is a non-inhibition layer. So it, it doesn't leave a sticky layer after you've applied it. And this stuff you can apply over anything. So that means it's great over the top of a top coat. I'm going to do two little round balls. You could do stars, you could do uh, long drops, teardrops, anything you like. But for the sake of this video, we're going to do two little balls. And don't forget, we need to add those two little, um, I don't know what they are, at the top of the ball balls to, to hold them on. Cure. Back in with Joker. Remember, that's the non-inhibition top coat. And we're going to apply that crispy, it's not even crispy, it's like that glitter snow effect over the top of the ball balls because what I'd like to do is have some continuity with all of the five nails so that they all match. So once this top coat is on, do not cure it. Exactly the same as that nail with the white. All you have to do is grab that glitter and then you're going to dust that glitter over the top. Now you could use, like I said before, an acrylic powder if you wanted to, but this is so cool and it looks so good with the red as well. Not many people go red and gold. No, let's do red and white. So it's time to add those pearls. We could do this with crystals or gems, but the pearls just looked amazing. So I've got this little pot of pearls, which I've had at the bottom of my glitter drawer for ages. I think I got them from Nails & Co. And then all I'm going to do is add these little pearls. They come in various different sizes over the top as if they were hanging down on pieces of string. So um, this was the inspiration that allowed me to create this design. Cure that. Those pearls are going nowhere with that builder gel. And then we're going to dust off that glitter. Now it's time for the main event. Yes, it's time for that Christmas candy. So we're going to start painting, hand painting. This is obviously the favourite part in any nail design. But have you noticed that I'm only doing one nail design over the whole set? That's because you want to do one accent now and you want to make sure that you can um, incorporate other nails that are so quick and easy to do. Your client will think that they've got a whole design, little time, but lots of money because you're going to charge them for it. So what I'm doing now is I'm drawing the outline of this Christy, 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 Christmas candy cane. Now, if you look at my brush, I've got um, 
the tip of my brush touching the surface of the nail. I've actually covered the whole of my brush with paint, but I'm only using the very, very tip. Now I did outline this because I do feel that an outline will work with this particular design. I'm gonna speed this up now because I've only got 10 minutes to do this for you. Um, and we're just gonna come, I'm gonna add the stripes. Don't worry too much if the stripes aren't actually perfect because we're gonna go over the top with the red as well. But having that line in place really does allow you to focus the eye and know exactly where things should be. And it makes sure that you can get that shape right. And remember, if you make a mistake because we've met top coat today, we could just wipe the baby off again and start all over. So we're just gonna add the red and you're just gonna use the tip of your brush again, the very, very tip of your brush, and just come in and apply red all the way down that candy cane. Just keep going. I am not Superwoman and I've just sped up this movie. <laughs> so if you watch this and think, wow, she's so quick at it. I'm not really. I wish I was, but I'm not. Okay, so we're done with this. And what we're going to do is now uh, just go in with the white. Obviously, I've waited till the red's dry. Please don't go in if the red's still wet. But it doesn't take long. I've used uh, Be Creative paints here and they really do not take very long to dry. Go in with the white. This is just so that we actually get that, um, uh, what's it called? The uh, contrast between the two. You don't want to just leave it because it just will not look finished. Going back around again with the black outline, but that should be super easy because you've already done it. Bow time. We're going to add a bow. Watch carefully how I do this. And have you noticed I'm doing it in pink? I'm not really, the bow is gonna be red, but I don't wanna go in and apply red first. And the reason why is because we've got various different colors and we're gonna to have to overlay that red and you're gonna see the changes behind it. So we're doing it in white, obviously a bit difficult with a white background. So if I did it in pink, I can go back over in red. And plus, you know, you might change your mind and you might wanna do it in pink. This bow would look great in green too. So don't think that pink is the, or red is the only option. You can see how we drew the bow. We did the ellipses first so that the bow looks like it's folded. And then we've left them open. So what we're gonna do once it's dry, um, just apply a darker version inside because that's where the shadow is. It's like inside the bow where you fold that ribbon over. Is there a technical word for that? I have no idea. And then we're just gonna add more shadow and outline the bow with that darker red. So it's not black, it's like a black and a red mixed together. Just go around the knot and just add some tiny little shadow before we add the red. Once we add the red over the top, you're actually gonna see the shadow, but you're not gonna see the line so much. I mean, it looks pretty good as it is really, but if we just add the red on top, it's gonna to finish it amazingly. Although now I'm watching this again, I'm thinking, actually I like it in pink. Gonna go over with the red and you can see how bright that red is. Because we've added that pink background, the red is a lot brighter and this is what we're actually looking for. So you're probably thinking this might be a little complicated for actual salon work. It's not because those other nail designs, you're gonna polish those nails anyway. And you could do this in 10, 20 minutes. What would you charge? I would charge a premium for this particular nail, but the other nails, they're add-ons. So you could just charge an extra pound, two pounds, three pounds to the whole service. That way they feel like they're getting a bargain. All my clients walk away with at least one accent nail. They probably get more because I love doing this. And if you're watching this and enjoying this, you probably love it too. Right, we're waiting for that bow to dry. So we're gonna do some tiny red lines. This is optional. And you could do this in green as well. I've seen some of these and they, they use the green with a green ribbon. That looks really good too. But tiny little red lines all the way along and I think it just finishes it off and makes it stand apart from another candy cane you might see out there. Bow's dry, time for highlights. We're gonna use the white and we're just gonna highlight that bow. Trust me, it's worth it. It just makes all the difference. So now this is all gonna be dry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna top coat it. For me, it has to be top coated in matte. It contrasts with the rest of the nails. So that's my first pin twist challenge done. I hope you like it.